What's this? No! Oh. Oh. No, Game PC. No, stop Only $600? Stop it. With an i7, isn't oh, that good? Stop, stop. An, an ah. RX 580? Ah. That's like the no. 480, no. right? Stop it. Mom! Yes, honey. Oh, stop What's up everybody, my name's Jake. I'm a PC enthusiast and flipper who's been building gaming PCs for the last five months. It's been one of the most exhilarating chapters of my life so far, and I guarantee if you click down this video and are interested in flipping PCs, it'll be one of yours too. This hustle has no restrictions. All you need is a little bit of money to start up and some experience. It'll give unprecedented joy and unprecedented amounts of wealth as well. This isn't a job where you're gonna be putting in 100% effort all the time. It's gonna be a lot of fun and a lot of exhilarating entertainment for you and a lot of cash. But it's not easy and you're gonna need to know a few things. One, how to build a PC. Two, how to talk to people. And three, you're gonna need hard work. If this sounds like you, PC flipping is probably the hustle for you. And if you're a kid or a teen like me, this might completely rule the out need for a job, which is what I use it for. Lock in, because this is gonna be a full guide on how to start and how to succeed in the long term. There are chapters in the description and on the timeline of this video. If you need to skip around, if you're looking for specific information, I hope this video gives you something you didn't know already. And I hope you can benefit from some of the tips and tricks that I've learned in my five months. Anywho, let's get with how you start. <laughs> try to clear yourself a space. In the basement of my house, there was this massive office that was completely filled with and storage. And over the course of about a week, I was able to clean it out and move everything and make it something great. You don't need a big space at all. If all you have is a corner in your bedroom, that's good enough. But it is nice to dedicate at least a table to this hustle. When you first get in, I don't recommend investing a whole lot. Either to summer job or have some spare money from tips, all you're gonna need is about three to four hundred. And this is gonna go directly into parts. For your first PC, I don't recommend going balls to the wall. The first PC I built was a 1070 PC with a Ryzen 5 3600 that I built for around $350 and sold for 560. That's over 200 in profit. And I didn't even deal hunt. Start, you're really only gonna need a Phillips head screwdriver, preferably with a magnetic tip for loose screws. And a nice tube of thermal paste. It doesn't really matter what kind you get, they're pretty much all the same thing. But personally, I use... Good old-fashioned Arctic MX4 or MX6, whatever you have. In my five months, I've only needed one tube of thermal paste, but that's mostly because all the CPU coolers I use come with thermal paste beer plot. When you start up, you're gonna wanna open a Google Sheets. I built a comprehensive spreadsheet, and it doesn't really have the mathematical uses that you'd use of a spreadsheet, but it keeps it organized nonetheless, and it's what and I, I don't really use. know how to format spreadsheets, so that's why. You should come like up that. with a catchy name for your pre-built company. For example, I use Chills Tech. And that's like basically my gamer tag in my clan for on Fortnite, and I also use that for my production company. So chills, tech. Anything you can come up with is gonna help. It'll make you sound official, it'll make you sound mean, it'll make you sound legit. So you need to stay positive. In this business, there can be ebbs and flows in the market and your PCs might not sell for a couple weeks. You really just have to get in the headspace that they're gonna sell and it's okay if they don't sell for a little but bit. But if they don't sell for a real long time, you might want to realist because Facebook can shadow ban For you. example, throughout the summer, my business was incredibly slow. I was only able to sell one to two PCs Per month. But now it's the end of September, moving into November, and the market has picked up a lot. I'm selling multiple PCs a week. And all, just allow the world to take its course. Don't treat this like you're working 24 hours. Have fun and enjoy. Another it. thing I can recommend is subscribe to YouTubers who post content like this. I'm not going to do that, so don't subscribe, dislike, unless you guys want me to make videos. But YouTubers like Elijah's Lab, which I'll leave in the description, has really motivated me to stay active. He posts about once a week, and he's usually flipping PCs at a higher level than anyone else. And it's really kind of just motivational to catch up with those videos every once in a while. I'm wondering, where do I even get parts? Where do I start? This is where you do. This is gonna be the most important, extensive part of the part of the uh, part of the part of the video. Part of the part of the video. Part of the video. What I always do is I start with my graphics card. For example, this PC over here, I started with a great deal on a 2060 for ninety dollars. I found that locally on Facebook and got incredibly but lucky. For your PCs, never go AMD. AMD is 100% the better choice for a personal gaming rig because of the price and performance that you get for that price. But little kids have no idea what a Radeon is, so don't even try to sell it to them. I've seen greatest success in the 60 series cards, 1060, 2060, 1660. 1660 supers are high, along with the 2060s. If you got a 2060, that may be selling fast. But the RTX in the title, Woo! once you picture NVIDIA graphics card, NVIDIA graphics card, you go 
to your CPU. And pretty much the, the instant choice that I always pick is the Ryzen 5 3600. There isn't a better option. It has unparalleled performance with pretty much every graphics card up to a 3060 Ti, and even then it'll handle it great and make a great quality PC. The 3600 can be found on eBay for $50 to $60, kind of reaching into the $70 territory. If you can s secure it for fast shipping for $60, that is a rock. However, deal. if you're willing to wait or buy in bulk, you can buy from AliExpress for about $53 and it will take about two weeks, but it kind of, it'll save you 10 bucks or so. I've done it once, but it's honestly not worth it once you get to a level where you're actually building and selling PCs. I frequently. recommend only buying from US sellers on or sellers eBay. abroad that are willing to ship fast because CPUs from China will take ages. I really don't recommend it unless you're pinching. Cool the Ryzen 5 3600, I always use Ray's Stealth Coolers. These coolers work absolutely amazing to cool the 3600, and they can be very, very easily painted to white, even if you're not. All you're gonna need is some rust. I'll get it, one second. All you're gonna need is some rust oleum 2X white paint. You can get these for like, I don't know actually. My father owns a hardware store, so he just brought this home. I don't know how much this costs, but it can't be that much. It's integral if you're building a white build. We're moving on to our case. You're going to want to build in white. White builds sell for way, way more, way faster. That's why pretty much all the builds I do nowadays are in white cases. With ARGB fans. Kids love RGB. RGB can get expensive though. So you're going to want ARGB. And RGB means addressing the button or software. However, in PC flipping, you're usually going to use a cheaper motherboard. That sometimes that doesn't have an ARGB header. That's 100% okay. If you can change the color of those fans, then that PC is selling. I highly recommend DIY PC, GameTex, and Sama for their cheap white cases. They also sell pretty cheap black ones. White um, is the meta right now. As of as of as of November 2020, the question is fish tank or a full size tower like with the one they here. They both sell really quick if you get white addressable RGB but fans. Fish tank cases are a lot harder to look nice. Cable management can be a bit harder in them, even though they have a double chassis. Hiding cables up the front can be more difficult. With full chassis, it all is one package. And you can kind of just stuff all the cables underneath the back. However, panel. if you're flipping, you should do a little bit of cable management. Moving on to the motherboards, I recommend AM4 B450s. Make sure they have NVMe support and at least two DIMM slots and a USB 3 header. Pretty much all modern cases are gonna have USB 3. You can find B450 motherboards Motherboards on eBay for around $60, and if you can get them cheaper, that's even better. Make sure they come with the IO shield. You can usually get IO shields pretty cheap on eBay if they don't come with the motherboard, but it's gonna take weeks for them to arrive because yes, they're coming from China. People love their IO shields. If it doesn't come with one, then it could lower your profit or just cause general confusion by the For buyer. the RAM meta, I definitely recommend 200 megahertz 16 gigabyte kit from Metech. It's a beautiful white kit of RAM that I use in pretty much all my builds. You can see it back it's here. It's a steal for how much it is. Especially when you buy multiple. If you're going with a black build, I recommend T-Force Vulcan. Or if you're going a little pricier, there's T-Force Delta, which has actual RGB. But I usually skip RGB RAM just for the software. It kind of annoys me. And I don't want to push that onto others, especially if it's going to come out of my pocket. All the builds I build come with a 512 gigabyte NVMe that I can usually get for around 20 to $30 on eBay. New storage is also really cheap. Just However, the 5 to $10 that you save going used kind of goes a long way. And personally, I have had absolutely zero issues with used storage, especially NVMe. As long as you stress test them before you send them out, they should be great. Most of the B450 motherboards that you buy are not going to have Gen 4, Gen 5 so for those SSDs. So any Gen 3 NVMe is going to work great. Also for any of these parts, check eBay sold. Make sure you're getting a great price on your parts. You can do that by toggling down on the left hand side until you find sold. On the mobile app you can go filter and then down and then more and you can see what items sell for For power price. supplies, I recommend a 6 to 700 watt Thermaltake white unit. Yes, I know people hate these things, but over the past two years I have had countless EVGA units go bad on me. Hold on. It's kind of tangled okay, up. There you go. I have had multiple EVGA units go bad on me and I have had zero problems with these thermal takes. I've built for friends, family, and even myself. I've used these. They were great. And they come with a five-year warranty. And I honestly just don't understand the reputation they have. They're a great power supply for the price. However, I wouldn't put like a 4090 Always on them. include Wi-Fi. Go with this cheap Wi-Fi card I find on eBay, and it works great. And honestly, Wi-Fi is not something you need to ball out on, as long as they have it. A $40 Wi-Fi card. Might get a little faster download speeds, 
but it's always something the buyer can upgrade in the future if they have a problem with and it. I've had zero problems. The cheap Wi-Fi card. These just work great for flips. Before you purchase your Wi-Fi card, make sure your graphics card doesn't cover the mini PCIe slot. If you know what I'm talking about, how a big graphic card could cut it off. That's happened multiple times, and I've had to go on Amazon and get a USB one. But never skimp on Wi-Fi. Also, for any of these parts, check your local Facebook marketplace because you could have some gems in your area. And usually the prices aren't firm, and this is where you can get your best deals. For example, on this graphics card I, back, I got back here, it was like 110, pumping down to 90. And that's happened many times. 3060 Ti for 175, already a great deal, but I was able to talk him down to 150 if I came to him. This is where your bread and butter is when you're On flipping. eBay and Facebook, never don't negotiate. The worst they can say is no. The best they can say is you get $20 off the price you were gonna pay anyway. What I gotta say is always start with your offer. Tips for building. Here's some tips for building. Building tips. Get yourself a screw holder and organizer. This has been a saving grace for whenever I need any specific kind of screws. And your cases are going to come up with a lot of extra screws that you probably don't even Keep them need. organized. Have a backlog of screws in case you ever need them. Also, use the right screws. It's not only going to look ugly, but it might cause problems. We're zoomed in I'm going to get back here so there's light on my face. Be incredibly careful, especially with these AM4 CPUs. You need to have a soft hand. And if a CPU comes, and if a CPU comes with bent pins, you better know how to fix it or you better return Sellers it. Sellers in the past have given me at least $15 off the original purchase. Always be a burden. When installing the motherboard, make sure all the standoffs in the case are in the correct spots before you put the motherboard in. This has probably happened like 15 times. Just do it. And also, make sure your screws are tight and as tight as they can. And if you lose a screw, make sure to pick it up because the buyer is going to pick up that computer and they're gonna hear that screw rattling around. And they're gonna think the graphics card's broken, the CPU's broken. They're gonna think something's wrong. With they're it. gonna want a refund. Tape delicate connectors. Some of the cases that I use are fantastic prices, but you can kind of tell. Because the connectors can come loose very easily. Especially the reset switch or LED button on the case connecting to power. It can be dreadful. They're little two pins and you gotta make sure you tape them. Electrical tape or scotch tape works. If you use scotch tape, so there isn't any tape touching the internals of the also connector. Also be aware of Molex connectors because yes, Molex can also you come very loose. You don't want their RGB breaking because then you gotta, want, you gotta help them and it's a bad time. It's not when a good time When you take your case out, keep your case box close in hand and also keep all the protective foam inside. When you're done with the PC, put it back in the box. It will make you look professional and make you look cool. Very, very cool. So, and also it may seem simple, but when you're doing this process of putting it back in the box, put it in right. This side goes on the top of the PC where there isn't any, any, uh, this any took legs, me about right? two months to catch on to, and I would always install them completely incorrectly here. And I would wonder why it wouldn't fit in the box and I would end up bending the box trying to fit it in. But the reason is because this side goes in the bottom on many cases. Can you see me through here? Yo, this is like an ASMR video now. Now that you got your PC all boxed up, let's test it. That doesn't make sense, but pull back. Using the Windows 11 media creation tool, which I'll leave a link to in the description. Create a Windows 11 with a flash drive. Just like this. This USB and any available USB ports on the computer. And install Windows. When it asks you for a key, do not put one in yet. When Windows is done installing, just head over, sign in. You can put your own email in because this is all gonna get erased later when you reset the PC. It's then when I go to electronicfirst.com, which I'll leave in the description, and I don't know how they do it, guys, but they have Windows 11 Pro Keys for $6, and I have bought so many of these, and I don't even know where they get these. They're probably stolen, but I don't know anything about that. If the feds get 100% legit Windows 11 Pro Keys, to the best of my knowledge, if they're not, let me know. Please let me know so I can alert the people that I've put their computers on here with their Windows 11 Pro licenses that work officially in the Windows activation key for some, some websites reason. Some websites are selling them for $20. Go to Electronic first, get used for $6, but don't put your credit card in there, please. Put, get, put PayPal on there or something. You need an extra layer of protection. I don't know where these get these you keys. You don't need any malicious scammers. They're $6 thing. if you want to try it. I've bought them. I usually buy them. I have an account on there, unfortunately. 
Probably a bad idea, but they're cheap. Good for flipping. And honestly, I'd try it once. Once Windows is installed and activated, at the very least, stress test it on 3D Mark. You can find this on Steam, it's free. You can download a demo version. You can run a few of their simulations that'll stress test your PC and make sure it's working good. After doing that, I usually test at least a couple of games and that adds direct information that I can add into the description I later. use MSI Afterburner to test the FPS and the 1% lows. I'll leave a link in the description to a video. There's a lot of links in this description, guys. If you wanna go down there, there's a lot of links if you like links. To speed up this process, I bought a 256 gig SATA SSD that I, I have a few games downloaded on it, so I don't have to worry about downloading them every single time because my Wi-Fi is slow. But once you've tested this PC and make sure it works great, and have Windows 11 activated, and you've reset the PC, now it's time to sell. That's not a monkey. That's you if you decide to sell on. I don't know what parasite has infected the YouTube PC flipping mindscape. Do not sell on Jawa. Do not sell on Jawa. It is a company that has built an empire on manipulating public information and doing very, very strategic and sporadic sponsorships. I know that sounds like an oxymoron, right? But they've pretty much sponsored anybody. And as long as you're not trying to be some kind of YouTube flipping YouTuber like me, some flip it up. Do not sell on Jawa. Do not endorse Jawa because they take $60. They take about 10% of your entire sales. Now, I might I might be naive by saying this, but why would you do this? I do not understand how so many YouTubers have fell victim to sponsorships. I don't know how much money they're giving them, but it's got to be a lot. Jawa is corrupt. I don't understand. Anywho, when you pick a place to actually sell your PC, Facebook, do it on Facebook. And if you are banned on Facebook Marketplace, make a new account. On Facebook Marketplace, they'll pretty much ban you for everything. And so you have a backload of positive reviews. Please, please keep it low-key. I got banned a couple of times on multiple accounts because I was relisting my PC when they weren't selling too frequently. Basically, it would just keep shadow banning so me. So keep a low profile, and if you're banned, use an alias. However, when you're actually ready to list your PC, you want to include in the title if it's customizable, AKA if it's ARGB, if it's white, include white out, and of course, add gaming PC. Add your graphics card in the title, and I always end off my descriptions by saying, buy Chills Tech. But where Chills Tech is, it'll just be whatever you call yourself. You gotta take some good photos, get from the top, rear, and I'll leave have many examples on the screen right now and I'm sure you've seen some throughout the video of me, my PCs these are the money shots you don't need an incredible camera However, I do use a good camera because I'm in the media production but as long as you can replicate the angles that's all you need in the description of course I'm gonna leave another link of the descriptions that I, I use. usually use cheeky humor and a very detailed in-depth explanation of what the PC is and what it does who it's for and what kind of games it'll play I split my sections up where I have a benchmark section a spec section but at the top I usually have an intro in the intro you got to be cheeky you got to be able to stand out just be yourself and if you're not cheeky and creative then then just copy somebody. When you get to your price, this is where you gotta check. Because depending on how much you paid for parts, which is basically how good you did on deal hunting, your PC might not be able to sell for exactly what you want it to. For example, a 1060 PC probably won't sell more than $500, so make sure to get good deals on deal However, hunting. However, a 1660 PC can probably sell up to $600, so you have a lot more wiggle room. The higher the price is, the longer it's gonna take to sell. For how many sellers like you who are refurbishing and making beautiful looking computers, there's an equal amount of people with similar specs that are selling them for dirt cheap because they just want to That's why you gotta specify in the description that it's a refurbished pre-built. For the price, I like to start with adding $150 to $200. As long as you're making a good amount of money that you're comfortable with, it's okay. And when you start out, you probably won't make as much money. Your eye for deals aren't gonna be as great as they would be five months into it. So don't worry if you're making a little less than 200. The 200 is a great ballpoint to look at, especially if you're hunting deals on the used market. And honestly, for the work you're putting in, $200 is pretty good. Also on my PCs, I always offer a warranty. My warranty is 15 days, and that might seem short, but it's only because 15 days gives buyers a small amount of assurance that might tip the scales, and on multiple occasions with me, has encouraged buyers for choosing me rather than someone else. And if you can assure them that it'll work and they can play games on that's it, that's more than a lot of sellers on Facebook are gonna be able to do. So I recommend having at least a 15 day warranty. And when you're selling, only sell to trustworthy people. If someone messages you in their pictures, them in a ski mask holding up gang signs, next to a stolen Hellcat, you probably shouldn't sell them a PC. And of course, that's a scenario that won't happen too often, and it's an over-exaggeration, but if you feel something's wrong, something's fishy, you don't have to sell to every person who wants to buy. I live in the middle of nowhere. If I listed my PCs where I live, I would have zero bites. So what I do is I list my PCs in a big city 
That's a couple hours the visibility away. Visibility is the biggest thing. And if someone really wants it, they'll be willing to come here. And halfway. for a big purchase like that, driving 30 minutes to an hour to me isn't too bad. Especially if you're making $200. Suffice to say, just be as kind as you can, answer any questions anyone asks, and just overall just be a good person. You'll find success in this business. What I always do is include a handwritten letter in my boxes, included with my flyer in case they ever need anything in the future. In that letter, I let them know that I hope they have a great time with the PC, and if they have a great experience, they should leave a review and it means a lot. And that's selling. <laughs> oh, oh yeah. I don't actually have money in my But hand. that's a successful sale. This is what you should do after you sell your computer. If you have a warranty, do not blow Especially your money. Especially with your first computer. But once that 15 days is You're up, ready to spend that money. This is really unlikely that anyone's gonna have an issue within 15 days, but it is a possibility and it's happened to me once. You can really throw a stick in the road on your metaphorical bicycle that just falls and over. And that money is gonna have to come out of your pocket. Luckily, it wasn't a full return. And when this person reached out to me, I was on the way home from my football game. It was a big win. This fan hub wouldn't work. Luckily, it was a small issue with a Molex connector not being taped down. So tape down your Molex connectors. Completely disable the fans. If someone system. reaches out with an issue, even after 15 days, just be calm, collected, try to help them out. But if they request a refund after your after your warranty's up, then they're pretty but much. As long done. as you handle it maturely. It'll all work out great. For your first five or so PCs, make sure that you keep that money into your PC business if you plan to sell more than five. Getting a good base of profit built into your business gives you further exploration and some more investment opportunities. But after about five, you should be okay to spend that money. This was a mistake I made early on when I bought the Meta Ray-Ban glasses after I sold two PCs, and I realized that I shouldn't have done that. It wasn't a good idea at all. It was bad because then I was poor and I had to come out of my money that I made during the summer. You were working a real stinky job. Anyway, that's what you should do after you sell. Long term though. <laughs> Haven't done this angle yet, I don't think. Anyway, this video is coming to Here's just some long term tips that'll help you out in the long run. If you're gonna be building PCs for a while. You should purchase in bulk. I know I'm gonna be building multiple PCs. I go ahead and purchase the non-integral main parts of the build, such as the race stealth coolers, which you can find on eBay for about $5 a piece if you buy them in bulk. And the shipping is very cheap. Most sellers will not up the shipping if you decide to purchase multiple. So the other day, I bought seven race stealth coolers because I ran out. And this will just give you a very strong foundation. Same with Wi-Fi cards. I usually buy a few of those at a time. After about a month, you should reach out to your buyers and ask them how they're doing. They might leave a positive review, and if they don't, pressure them. Positive reviews mean everything, and you need you need reviews on Facebook. After five positive reviews on Facebook, they become public, and that means everything. That means a complete difference. If you got five, five star reviews, these will start flying out the door. I hope you like my video. Um, if you have any questions, let me know. Um, have a good day, dog. Also, if you're looking for a high quality PC, I can ship to you across the continental United States. And you probably aren't, um, but um, my Facebook page is right here. I got all kinds of great PCs, and I can ship if you'd like me to. Anyway, have a fantastic day, and rock on. Jake Gamers. Jake's Gamers. Thank you, man. Wow. What's this? Yes, honey, of course. If that's what you really want.